Ladies, gentlemen, graduands, and all the millions watching on the internet, welcome. The grand neo-Gothic surroundings of the Whitworth Hall in which we are assembled are stunning. But the building is not as old as it might look. Gothic architecture originated in the 12th century and endured for 400 or so years, while this building was only opened in 1902. As I look out at you, I see another facade. Dozens of people dressed in strange hats, wearing brightly colored silk. And I can assure you it's nothing to do with Star Wars. <laughs> it is, of course, very different to the attire we're used to wearing. From your perspective, looking up at the stage, you'll see similar clothes, which I assure you is also not normal wear for the staff. The observant among you will in due course spot a strange cap doffing ritual that we go through every now and then and don't quite master. And I warn you that over the course of the ceremony, you'll also hear quite a few arcane phrases, the origins of which are lost in the mist of time. All in all, this really is a bit odd, isn't it? And definitely not an everyday experience. However, behind the pomp of this slightly bizarre occasion, we are celebrating something that's very real. You, our graduates, are not here to simply dress up or walk nervously to this stage negotiate the rickety stairs, variously bruise, moisten, and or contaminate my hand, <laughs> and march quickly back to your seat. You're not here to simply have lots of photographs taken in your quirky finery, and you're certainly not here to only get a good meal out of those who've accompanied you. You are here to have your academic ability recognized and for us all to celebrate the enormous amount of hard work that you've put in during the course of your stay in Manchester. I want you to go away from this event with a very strong sense of pride in your achievement and to recognize that something tangible has emerged. You have a real degree to show for your efforts, in many cases a second degree. And this will not be taken away from you and can be used to shape your career. I'm delighted there are so many family members and friends here today. We thank you for the support, guidance and encouragement that you have given our graduates during their studies. I'm sure that you are immensely proud of their achievements, and I'm equally convinced that our graduates recognize your enormous contributions. Today is also a day for all of you to dwell on these sentiments. So this may be a very strange occasion that we find ourselves in today, and it is a bit like being in a galaxy far, far away. But the occasion is real, and we should not forget its purpose. On behalf of the university, please accept my heartfelt congratulations for your superb achievement, and I wish you every success and happiness in your future lives and careers. You can applaud. <laughs> Longer if you wish. <laughs> Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Professor Caroline Bauscher from the Faculty of Life Sciences. Caroline. Good afternoon. If this is your first time in the Whitworth Hall, then I hope you enjoy the grandness of the setting. May I welcome the guests here as family and friends and supporters of those about to graduate, some of whom I'm sure have travelled here from some distance. I'm sure you must be very proud of the achievements of the graduates sitting here, but I'm certain that most of them would not have been here today if it were not for your emotional and probably financial support. We're going to spend a good deal of time and energy applauding our graduates later in the ceremony, but perhaps the graduates would like to stand and show their appreciation for their family, friends and supporters who have been behind them during this journey. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate all of our graduates here today on behalf of the Faculty of Life Sciences. Our students are an important part of the faculty and make a huge contribution to its success. 
The faculty prides itself on the excellence of its research and the quality of its teaching. We are proud that our teaching is research-led, which means that you're taught by experts, many of whom are internationally recognised researchers and are themselves carrying out cutting-edge research. Research in the faculty ranges from exploring the chemical structures that make up living cells, understanding whole plants and animal systems, to studies of the interactions between living things and the environment. Recent groundbreaking research includes discoveries that could provide better treatment for cancer, provide potential therapeutic targets for the treatment of strokes, identify treatments that could make epilepsy preventable from birth, and identify ways for increasing tree growth and understanding how animals anticipate the approach of day and night so that they're able to reset their internal body clocks. Our graduate students are not only key players in the teams carrying out such research, but they're also a vibrant part of our research community. We're proud of their contribution, not only to the research output of the faculty, but for their contribution to society through public engagement involving our local schools and other organisations. Today, we celebrate the graduation of undergraduate, masters and PhD students from the Faculty of Life Sciences. Students graduating today have not only come from the United Kingdom, but from all over the world to complete their education and training. From the United States of America, Malaysia, Kuwait, Thailand, and Taiwan, and Belarus, to name but a few countries. We host a breadth of master's programmes, from the history of science, technology, and medicine, to biotechnology and enterprise, bioinformatics, cell biology, and environmental sciences. Your time as a master's student is one of the most important in your career, as a stepping stone towards further study or to employment. Many of our master's graduates go on to PhD positions, but your job prospects are also excellent. Previous graduates are now working in companies across the globe in management, marketing and research, as well as universities and research institutes, all showing the world what a University of Manchester training can lead to. Communicating our research findings in a way that can be understood by the wider community is an important part of being a scientist, and all of our students recognise this. Nearly all of our PhD students graduating today have published or are in the process of publishing their research findings, many as lead authors in top-ranked academic journals, such as the Journal of Immunotoxicology, Frontiers of Neuroscience, Animal Behaviour, Plus One, current research in Egyptology and the Journal of Experimental Biology and Agricultural Sciences. Destinations of today's graduates include further studies, postdoctoral research positions in the universities of Manchester and further afield in Copenhagen and the United States of America. Lectureships across the world, positions in the NHS, the pharmaceutical and business sectors and careers in medical writing, health research positions in Kuwait, Thailand and Malaysia <coughs> and positions in biotechnology and related industries. Those of you sitting here today have come to us from far and wide. Many of you will leave us, and even those who stay in Manchester will be embarking on new challenges. We cannot know, how, know what your future holds, but you know you can rely on us to support you as much as we can in your future endeavours. We wish you well as you move forward from celebrating your successes today, and we hope that you'll come back to visit us Please keep in touch through the Alumni Association and let us know what you're doing. Vice President. On behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Christopher Adinsel. <laughs> Joseph Ainscoff. <laughs> David Ashbrook. Kelly Bennett.
Michael Boylan. Eric Chang. Victoria Louise Chapman. Sarah May Edwards. Thomas McPherson Fenton. Richard Greenhouse. Suve Wang. Lorna Mullen. Puapong Nimking Ratana. Emma Murphy. Pauline Ann Norris. Donna Page. Raja Fahana Binti Raja Karadin. Kaylee Ann Rose. <laughs> Ivan Susanovic. <laughs> Sarah Shamsa. <laughs> Christina Stanley. Mark White. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Research in Biological Sciences, Robert, Robert Philip Baines. <laughs> Charlotte Daisy Bridge. Terence Stephen Garner. <laughs> Alkisti Manusaki. <laughs> Richard James McDowell. <laughs> David Pettifer. Thomas Rees Puttick. <laughs> Nicola Louise Robson. <laughs> and in integrative biology, Jack Broadbent. <laughs> Irene Huega Gomez. George Picard. <laughs> Amertha Maria Lena Vijay Kumar. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Master of Science in Application in Environmental Science, Nicholas Hornberg. <laughs> Kong Yu Hu. <laughs> Loreto Ross. Phil Thomas. <laughs> Joseph David Whitehead. <laughs> Anne
and in biochemistry, Kuang Ting Kong. Nikita Vekaria. And in bioinformatics and systems biology, Michael Alan Barber. And in biotechnology and enterprise, Nishta Chandra. Love Light Day. Emanuela Ferrezzi. Glenn Budi Santoro. And in cancer research and molecular biomedicine, Ara Adnan Al Gafli. Robin Broad. Irene Christodoulou. Louis King. And in cell biology, Joshua Cumming. Marcus John Duff, <laughs> Thomas George Minchinton, <laughs> and in history of science, technology, and medicine, Matthew Rhys Andrews, <laughs> Thomas Stavning Erslev. And in medical humanities, Claire Louise Coggins, <laughs> Yasmina Huda Genati, <laughs> Alice Elizabeth Ryrie, <laughs> Distinguished Achievement Award, Gemma Wilson. Over, over the past year, Gemma has demonstrated a singular and outstanding personal, professional, and academic commitment to medical humanities. Gemma's endeavor to depict the childhood and family experiences of obesity culminated in a truly outstanding and inspirational portfolio dissertation, in which she blended different media and artistic and literary forms winning her the highest mark for the medical humanities dissertation component of the course. She has successfully completed her MSc degree and has been awarded a place on a PhD program in medical humanities at Age Hill in Liverpool in collaboration with the Whitworth Art Gallery at Manchester. Gemma is a leading light for the creative application of arts in healthcare and we will watch her future career with interest. Jebba Wilson, so, so, so. Joanna Wingfield, Amy Megan Yarker, and in neuroscience, Cecilia Michelin Sanchez Ferreira de Moraes. Jonathan Gok, Georgina Jens Hudson, Ben Orley Daniel Nathanson,
Charlotte Elisabeth Pelecanu. And in research methods in history of science, technology, and medicine, Richard Douglas. And for the postgraduate certificate in immunology and immunogenetics, David Richard Waring. John Patrick Hodkinson. And for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry with Industrial Professional Experience with honors, Lee Hopwood. <laughs> and in Biomedical Sciences with honors, Amina Ali Glam. <laughs> and in Biotechnology with honors, Marpin. And in neuroscience with honors, Sana Chaudhry. <laughs> Arisom James Morris. Vice President. Good afternoon, graduates and guests. I'm Professor Kay Marshall, and I have the privilege of being the head of the Manchester Pharmacy School in the Faculty of Medical and Human Sciences. I've been here nearly as long as those co collecting their doctorates today, and I hope that all of our graduates have enjoyed their time here in Manchester as much as I have. I've had great pleasure in getting to know some of them pretty well, but even if my encounters have only been brief or of the virtual kind, they have left me with a good impression. You make me confident that pharmacy and the pharmaceutical sciences, we are playing a role in delivering better medicines and health by our research and by our teaching, producing graduates who are fit for the future. For our part, we work hard to ensure that our education is delivered by research based scientists as, appro as appropriate for a research intensive university. And it's right that our students are beneficiaries of our labors. This time last year, we were still awaiting the results of our audit, the Research Excellence Framework or REF. And just like the students in front of us today, we had to wait to see how our hard work was judged. This time it was over six years. And we were pleased that we were rewarded when the allied healthcare professions by coming top out of a class of 94 in terms of research power, demonstrating that not only we went on to publish our work, but this work had impact in healthcare. In the Manchester Pharmacy School, our impact span from making prescribing safer to improving the management of many diseases by developing and using new drugs. So the wider dissemination of research is really important. It fuels innovation. And I would encourage all of you collecting research awards today to make the time to publish your work. In gaining your degree, you should feel confident that you too can have impact. You can change things that could improve health in your community or even contribute to the next blockbuster drug. For now, it's time to use your Manchester education as you take the next steps in your career and continue your lifelong learning journey. I know from experience lately meeting many of our alumni that our graduates do go on to do great things, spanning across the breadth of pharmaceutical care. Just recently, I've been impressed by some stunning portfolio careers. And on reflection, I recognize that all of our graduates exhibit common characteristics. They're confident 
are not afraid to make bold decisions. They have tremendous energy and a propensity to work hard, but they're also altruistic and recognize their responsibilities to others, not least their old school, as they give up so much time to help nurture the next generation. So please do stay in touch with us and remain part of our community. Finally, I know I made some of the most meaningful friendships in my life with people I met at university, and I hope that you can say the same. But recognize that you got here today, not only through your own efforts, but also because you were supported by the people joining in our celebration today, your families. So like my colleagues, I congratulate you on your achievements and wish you every success and happiness. And keeping on the same theme as the Dean, I suppose I should finish with, may the force be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Samuel Marsh. Ola Dapo Joseph Ogonbayo. <laughs> Elam Santena. <laughs> Alad Williams. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science in Community Pharmacy Public Health Services, Haley Jane Berry. <laughs> Paul Anthony Jenks. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Pharmacy with Honours, Christopher William Gillespie. And for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences with honours, Kar Ying Ong. Vice President. I am Professor Paul Coulthard and Head of the School of Dentistry. The School of Dentistry has a rich history and we started awarding degrees back in 1885. Our whole purpose is to improve oral and craniofacial health both locally and globally. We do this through our education and through our research. We offer a BDS degree and a BSc in oral health sciences. In postgraduate education, we offer a wide variety of masters and doctorate programs. Some of these are in science and some incorporate clinical experience and clinical training. Many of our graduates and postgraduates have gone on to senior leadership positions around the world. All are equipped to make a difference. We produce graduates who are future leaders focused on whole patient care and who are scientists, scholars and critical thinkers. Our clinical students have had a training that builds skills, communication skills, enables learning in partnership with patients, and is integrated with science and clinical practice. Many graduates choose to work in general or specialist practice, and do so offering the highest standards of care based on the best research evidence. Evidence-based practice permeates everything that we do here at Manchester. Others develop a love for research and continue with a research career. When the last government exercise took place back in 2008, we were ranked first of all the dental schools in the United Kingdom. The next of these exercises took place last year with the results announced just before Christmas, as you've heard from Professor Marshall. For that exercise, dentistry, together with pharmacy and other health professions, was ranked as a group, and as you've heard, we did extremely well and came first in that competition of 94 around the United Kingdom. Our research extends from understanding the development of the face and mouth to biomaterials and to large clinical trials. We hold an £11 million grant for the largest ever cleft lip and palate research programme. 
We received an additional £5 million to extend this programme just a couple of months ago. We host the Cochrane Oral Health Group that produce high quality reviews to answer important clinical questions and inform policy and change practice. You've had the privilege to learn in this world-class research environment. We have a strong international reputation. We've been asked to develop a formal collaboration with the School of Dental Medicine in Boston. We have already strong links with NYU, with several of our staff in New York last week providing staff training in evidence-based practice. We have a collaboration with the Nippon Dental University in Japan, and we're supporting the School of Dentistry in Egypt as part of our social responsibility mission. University education is a huge privilege and offers a huge opportunity. It changes your life and makes you see the world differently. You also have fun and make lots of friends. The students who graduated back in 1955 have continued to meet every year since graduation. A few months ago, I attended their 60th annual dinner celebration. Please keep in touch with your school. Uh, we have Samanda, which is our dental school alumni, and as you know, we also have a new Twitter account and a new Facebook page. Congratulations from the School of Dentistry on achieving your success. You will be our ambassadors around the world and in the UK. You have the ability to make a difference in the world by improving the quality of patients' lives through your care and through your research. Thank you. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Cold Yaya M. Halladal. <laughs> Hanan Al Sunbul. <laughs> Joanne Cunliffe. <laughs> and Natalie Miazga. And for the degree of Master of Philosophy in Biomaterial Science and Dental Technology, Rabia Salah Udin. <laughs> and in Dental Public Health, Community Dentistry, Kate Wise McKenzie. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Dental Public Health, Anne-Marie Aegeus. And for the degree of Master of Research in Dental Public Health, Stephanie Linden King. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science in Dental Specialties, Endodontics, Baka Riyad Yunis Al Obeidi. <laughs> Nua Mohammed Shamakar. And in dental specialties, fixed and removable prosthodontics, Elizabeth Morris. <laughs> and in dental specialties, oral and maxillofacial surgery, Rajab Ali Rajab Abuzgia. <laughs> Sharifa Hamed Omar Ali. Ahmed Ali Mohsin Al Marashi. <laughs> Peter Adam Buckley. <laughs> Pippa Cullingham. <laughs> Verena Toadling. And in clinical dentistry, fixed and removable prosthodontics, Nada Albi Alhabi. <laughs> Siti Salwa Binti Idris. <laughs> Sa 
Salva Mala Munasami. <laughs> Nisrin Amar B. M. Saidi. <laughs> and in clinical dentistry, orthodontics, Farouk Ahmed. And in restorative and aesthetic dentistry, Hamed Yea Hassan. <laughs> Dipthi Priya Penaconda. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Dental Surgery, Karan Farmer. And James Plant. We also have one more graduate for the oral and maxillofacial surgery, and that's Nikolai Petrov. Vice President. Good afternoon. I'm Rachel Kalen and Head of the School of Psychological Sciences. And on behalf of the school, I'm very proud to celebrate the achievements of our graduates here today. Many of you are being awarded degrees that will enable you to work in healthcare, following your rigorous academic study and demanding professional and clinical training. These careers will play an important role in improving the quality of people's lives locally and globally. Our school enjoys a long and distinguished history of innovation. Some of the earliest work on the psychological impact of war was carried out here a century ago by Peer, our first professor of psychology. Work of this kind laid foundations for a great deal of modern experimental and applied psychology. Now we recognize that a quarter of the population will experience a mental health difficulty in the course of a year. Manchester's strength in understanding and treating mental health difficulties is known internationally. Our Centre for Health Psychology similarly brings together an outstanding group of experts. We have major strength in cognitive and clinical neuroscience, which is fundamental to the understanding and to the treatment of many conditions, for example, dementia and stroke. Students of audiology benefit from the long and distinguished pioneering history of the subject at Manchester. The role of audiologists will, of course, increase with the growing ageing population. Our deaf education programme is run by the only professor of deaf education in the UK. We also enjoy long-established leading expertise in speech and language therapy here at Manchester. As with our other programmes, gaining a place is highly competitive and students learn with experts. We have had £10 million awarded for our research on language development recently. We are proud of our leading research and teaching. One thing that characterises our school too is our commitment to the wider community. Many students and staff take part in activities with local school children and community members to share ideas and also to demonstrate the fun that there is to be had at university. Our school has received many awards for our work, reflecting the university's priorities for social responsibility. For many of you, your working lives will bring you into contact with some of the most vulnerable people in society. I hope that you will work with a determination to make a difference. Graduates need to be adaptable and to be flexible. I'd like to encourage you, in the words of our President and Vice-Chancellor, Professor Dame Nancy Rothwell, to use your head but follow your heart. As one of the students graduating today wrote to me, using both your heart and mind can be an incredibly powerful combination. 
I hope your degree stands you in good stead for the future and wish you all good fortune as you move on to the next stage of your career. Congratulations. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Stephanie Ainsworth. <laughs> Ala Elkani. <laughs> Lindsay Teal. And for the degree of Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Paul David Baker. <laughs> Nicola Burke. <laughs> Hannah Ruth Darrell Berry. <laughs> Rebecca Gillum. Samantha Hartley. <laughs> Maria Kaltzi. <laughs> Trevor Landry. <laughs> Gabrielle Leggett. <laughs> Laura Maxson. Lee Milligan. Grace O'Shea. Jasper Palmier Klaus. Charlene Plunkett. Charlotte Elizabeth Russell. <laughs> Pauline Tapping. <laughs> Samantha Ray Tucker. <laughs> Daniel Philip Weisberg. And for the degree of Master of Research in Psychology, Rebecca Lydia Miriam Amos. <laughs> Crystal Lynn Blankenbaker. <laughs> Leone Buckle. <laughs> Robin Dowlin. Hannah Louise Hartley. <laughs> Edward Adlington Howard. <laughs> Vanessa Gail McIntyre. <laughs> Laura McGowan. Arwa Ali Mohammed, <laughs> Holly Elizabeth Reed, <laughs> Rebecca Sutton, <laughs> Emma Jane Swift. Joanne Tipping. <laughs> Emily Williams. <laughs> Anna
and for the degree of Master of Science in Audiology, Amal Abu Ketish. <laughs> Amal Ali Mari. <laughs> Wei Pei Chung. <laughs> Maria Krushma. Peter Andrew Maguire. <laughs> Madhushani Tharaka Manampere. <laughs> Samuel Ranger. <laughs> and in clinical and health psychology, Nazina Arafin. Carmen Oye Ung. <laughs> Georgia Suzanne Beziuk. <laughs> Jack Stephen Benton. <laughs> Erica Cantrell. Marissa Ann Clark. <laughs> Ashleen Maureen Cook. <laughs> Tanika Latoya Elliott. <laughs> Bushra Farouk. Laura Frost. <laughs> Jakob Gritz Grizolka. <laughs> Rebecca Harrop. <laughs> Abby Jane Hepworth. Susanna Grace Jenkins. <laughs> Emmeline Lucy Jane Joyce. <laughs> Daniel Martin Miele. <laughs> Aisha Shahid. Fiona Nancy Varney. <laughs> Sophie Jane Wilkes. <laughs> and in deaf education, Yvonne Diane Allen. <laughs> Helen Webster. and in clinical science, neurosensory sciences, Emma Noble. <laughs> and in neuroimaging for clinical and cognitive neuroscience, Laura May Bryant. <laughs> Amy Hammond. Danielle Louise Hewitt. <laughs> Carmen Florentina Ayonaita. <laughs> Miriam Jalali. <laughs> Hannah Jill Lam. Haley Jane Lowther. <laughs> Ashvente Valje. <laughs> Jennifer Helen Wally. <laughs> and for the postgraduate diploma in audiology, 
Safran Saraya Hattersley. Sarah Kilgallen. <laughs> and in clinical and health psychology, Margaret Cortama Thordjur. <laughs> and in deaf education, Vicky Ann Bonner. And for the postgraduate certificate in audiology, Matthew Jeremy Harmsworth. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Audiology with honours, Sally Elizabeth Barlow. <laughs> and in psychology with honours, Ruth Babington. Sam Bolton Jane Grace Goslin Simone Harvey Emily Knight Jessica Louise McNally and in speech and language therapy with honours, Gita Mehta and for the degree of Master of Science in Medical Virology, Dema Mohammed Zailis. On behalf of the University of Manchester, I once again congratulate all of you who are graduating here today on your excellent achievements, and I wish you every success and happiness in your future lives and careers, and a very happy holidays. I now declare this ceremony closed. <laughs>